this is the Tiffany room, and you are about to see Code Review Forwards and Back by me, Sumana Hariharishwara, and by me, Jason Owen. All right, let's get started. Right. Hey. Hey. Uh, so I just saw your message. Yeah, is now still a good time for the code review? Uh, yeah, if it's good for you. Uh, is your feature branch up to date? Yes, um, I just pushed all my latest changes and it's ready for you to take a look. Okay, uh, I am pulling it down now and you know, most of the time we are not gonna need to do this face to face, right? Uh, no. We'll do it online on GitHub. Um, and uh, remind me, okay, what is this for? Okay, so this is for bug 1104, which is to um, stop parsing the HTML and start using the API instead. Okay, yeah, I remember this um, now. And I figured while I was working on that, um, I could clean up the code a little bit, um, add a bug class to take care of some of these interactions, and um, of course, add a test. Okay, so just to start with, you know, having your commit messages say that with an active verb as the first word. Okay. Is, is um, also, this commit message at the start, you're going over 50 characters in the first line. Okay. And uh, we really don't like to do that. Uh, there's, so the reason this is messy, you're not taking notes? Oh, um, sure. Do you have a? Uh, yeah, there's a oh, yeah, okay. pen there. Okay, so here in test underscore extract underscore bug underscore info, you see how you don't have spaces after the commas in the parameter, uh, that makes it harder to read. Uh, okay. What, what is this? What, okay. Um, I am not really used to caring about these kinds of things. Like, in my assignments, if the code works, then it passes, and if it doesn't, then it doesn't, so, like. That's, yeah, I mean, working is important. That is definitely the most important thing. Uh, okay, so, Okay, so I guess uh, by focusing on this, you're saying that these things are important yes, also. Yes, okay, look. This is small, but it's about consistency. If all of the code in the code base is consistent and looks the same, then it's easier for us to change it, and because it, it's easy to see what's different in every diff, right? We're not, you know, adding or changing, you know, white space or commas or, uh, if the code is consistent, if all the code in the code base looks the same on a stylistic level, then when we review diffs, it's easier to actually see what changes, what's really important underneath of the logic of the piece. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So that, that, that it matters. And here's another. So you've added retriable and HT party as gems to this project. Mm -hmm. You've put them at the end of the gem file. Yes. If you keep a gem file alphabetical, then it's easy for someone five months from now to check and see whether a particular gem is used in the project. Okay, I mean, I can fix that, but um, couldn't they just use search? Your colleagues are capable of using grep, but with every commit you make, if you think about developer experience, right, think about how can you make it easy for someone else to read this code if it's two in the morning, they rolled out of bed because they got paged, and then they you know, hit and scroll to see what it does, then if you think about developer experience in every commit, then you're making it easier for possibly you in the future to know what your code does. Okay. All right, so you know what to fix? Yeah, okay, um, so fix the spacing, yep. um, alphabetize the gem file, mm -hmm. and fix the commit messages. Right, because okay, here, let me show you the developer experience the first line of a commit message, if it's too long, it gets truncated. Right, I noticed that on GitHub too. Right, right. and when someone's running git log, that's also, so it's annoying. Okay. So okay, to back up a little bit, the point of this issue is, if we're integrating you know, a CMS and a bug tracker, the feeds from it, oh, someone's pinging me. Oh, uh, okay. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll fix those things. Yep. And? Yeah, fix, uh, check the style guide, look at some other code, make sure it matches up what's in the existing code base, and then it's, you know, it's probably good, so go ahead and merge it. Into master? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so it's been two days, um, and Randall is wondering why the site went down. Oh, boy, this is gonna be hard to explain. So, I, I'm curious. Why does he, is this for the blog post? Oh, no, 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 no. The, um, there are only three kinds of corporate blog post. Um, there's, please get your friends to try our new beta. 
There's one we've gotten very good at, which is we apologize for the recent outage. And then there's one we may be doing soon, which is thank you for our incredible journey. Okay, so this is about um, explaining to the higher ups tomorrow. Yeah, oh yeah, there is gonna be a meeting tomorrow in a big room um, where I explain to a number of people with interesting titles why we had this outage and why, why we didn't prevent it. Really. Okay, so on a code level, we figured this out, right? Like, um, we were streaming the data into the disk cache, um, and that worked when we had the uh, VM get it replaced every deploy. Right. And then we were deploying every couple of days, but Darren went out of town for a week or two, and so we didn't have any deploys in that time. Oh, that is the most robust thing I've ever heard. Well, uh, and so the disk filled up and the application crashed. They are going to ask the extremely reasonable question of why we were not instrumenting and monitoring this extremely important process. We thought we were. We wrote code specifically to handle this situation. Uh -huh. But it turns out that that code just never ran. How did we not notice that? I mean, there's another, one that's another method that's named similarly, and we used the wrong one, and it doesn't do the same thing. And no one saw. Who would have seen? I am going to have to explain why we switched to self-review. You think we would have caught this in code review? Yes. We never caught stuff like that. We were always focused on like the silly RuboCop level stuff. Our code is super pretty. It just does useless things. <laughs> you know, if I could do a few things over again. Oh, hey. hey. Uh, yeah, I just saw your IRC message. Yes, um, is now still a good time to double check the code review? Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I mean. I, I noticed that both you and Randall had said some things on it, so um, I wanted to check in with you. Oh, okay, um, I'm pulling it down now. The feature branch is up to date? Yes, um, I just updated it based on some of Randall's comments. Okay, um, uh, remind me what this does. Yeah, so this is for bug 1104, which is to um, stop parsing HTML and start using the API okay, instead. Okay, I remember now, yeah. Um, and I figured while I was in there, I could clean up some of the um, code, uh, add a bug class to handle some of these interactions, and of course, add some tests. Okay, that's... Okay, so why did you put the bug class in this file? I mean, it made sense to me there. Oh, oh that should go in our utilities library. Okay, so... One of the comments that Randall had on something else was that um, classes should be close to their uses. Randall is very often right about a lot of these kinds of things. Okay. But, um, I, I, it, we're, okay, across the organization, uh, we are trying to, in order to make the dis developer experience more robust, uh, we are trying to consolidate interfaces to external resources okay. and to and so that's why that should I mean it's more discoverable that way and so that's why the utilities library is the house th that's where you should put that okay yeah, I can yeah. Move that. okay so what else here um, this test uh, the name of it you should rename it to be consistent with the rest of the with snake case with underscores instead of camel case oh, yep sorry okay I'll get that all right, so here you're using HTTP client as the base case. Um, that's yeah. actually deprecated, and you'll need to use API client. Do you know where that is? I can find it. Well, yeah, it. Um, I thought that HTTP client was the new thing. Who told you that? Randall did, in, in one of the resolved comments on the pull request, Randall. Um, I originally wrote uh -huh. it for the, and just switched. So there's a number of component choices, including this one, where uh, I'm, I'm sorry that it, um, it didn't come up yet before the architecture committee. Mm. Um, the, there's this sort of, the cross org task force, uh, I, I remembered it being on the previous agenda, now I remember it got pushed. Mm. So, I'm um, sorry, I thought we'd already made a decision on this one because, uh, okay, but anyway, it's for the meeting next week, so we need to actually, to check which one we're actually gonna use across the, or it's kind of a formality, but we need to do a bake off. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. I mean, look, API client is clearly technically superior, but uh, in fact, I can use your branch as an example. Oh, did you just switch it? Though, okay. So anyway, we um, I can't merge all of this pull request until that's finished. Okay. When will that be? So let's see. It's every other week um, that they meet, and um, the Bake Off starts next week, and then um, oh right, Thanksgiving, and Mike's out. Um, uh, so late uh, five weeks. Five weeks. Okay. Look, I know how this. We want to be 
robust and defensible in our component choices across the organization so that you know, team members who need to uh, you know, switch into other projects and uh, reusing the same components across the organization. In the long run, if, if you're on the same tool chain, that's gonna increase organizational velocity. And so, look, okay, if you change the bug class, move that with the utilities library and clean up the test name and so on. I mean, I'll let you know what the architecture committee decides, maybe we can speed it. Uh, you have runway, right? You have something else to do? Yeah, I can figure something out. Okay, great. Oh, um, so I, you know, I was hoping that we would have your help with the rewrite, but congrats on the new gig. Thank you. <laughs> I am super excited for this new opportunity. And it just felt like the right time to, to move on, you know? Right. Um, well, okay, so it's two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's, um, let's see what we have you working on for your last two weeks. You were figuring out the Sinatra to Rails migration number 210. Yes, um, that PR got a lot of comments, so it's going yeah. to take at least a few rounds to address all of those. More than two weeks? Definitely. <laughs> okay, um, what about, you were also working on bug 1509 over here, right? Yes, um, so I got that working on my machine, but Sam pointed out that it's not going to work on Oracle, um, and DevOps can't give me a new instance until they get the new hardware, so I'm blocked on that. Oh. Okay, what about uh, 1677, the security one? Yeah, um, that one I'm blocked on the security team. Yeah. They, um, they don't have any capacity this sprint. Like You we, asked them? Yeah, I thought we'd plan this out, but they have other stories oh, that are higher um, priority, so. Okay, so how many bugs do you have assigned in Jira? Like 12, I think. Okay, well, I mean, most of them we can close. I'm gonna, you know, because we can won't fix them because the rewrite is gonna obviate them. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, and that's... <laughs> It's, it's pretty soon, so I can do that. And then, okay, on Sinatra to Rails, start addressing just as many of those, like, like at mention me on, a, on a, as many of those comments as you need to, mm -hmm. and assign, or no, I mean, assign stuff to me, but first see what you can do this week, sure. and I'll hand stuff up. And, and so the next week, there's a new dev starting, and I figure <laughs> you can train them up and help them get to, up to speed on the current system. Sure. And I mean, you could even, like, when you're on your way out, you could give them your dev box. Yeah, I'll get started on that tomorrow. See ya. <laughs> if I could just do a few things over. Hey. Oh, hey, did I get a text message from you? Yeah, um, I was wondering if you had a chance to take a look at the code review. For, for you? Mm -hmm. For the, I mean, is this the, um, a feature branch that's, I mean, it's up to date now? Yes, um, I pushed all my latest changes and it's ready for you to look at. Now? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I'll pull, I'll pull, um, okay, it's on, it's on GitHub on, under your, your, okay, yeah. yeah. I'm pulling it down. <clears throat> um, so I wasn't sure if I should like prepare something for this meeting. What? Like a, I don't know, like an outline or a walkthrough or a slide deck. What? For, for, the, for what? For the code review meeting? Oh, oh, no, I mean, oh, okay. So, like, we're, you're on-ramping, mm -hmm. right? So, like, you're not going to have too many of these. Like, once you finish on-ramping, you're probably going to only ask for code review for really major changes. Okay. And so, you know, it's only if it's big, right? Um, but this isn't, oh, but actually, you do have kind of a big commit here. Um, do you... That's a, a lot of lines. Actually, do you know how to use git add-p when you're making a commit uh, to no. make real tight little? No, oh, tell cool. me about I saw a Kellen, uh, like a blog post about it. It was really great. I, I can text you a link unless you great. want. Do you want me to email or, or Slack it to you? Or yeah, whatever's comment? good. Okay. Oh, um, so I don't know uh, how much we want to be using this is the, the, the API mm -hmm. that I don't, I don't know, uh, I mean, if you're good with that. I mean, uh, is, it, is it getting deprecated or, or what's the concern? I, not that I know of. Okay. But, I mean, I like places like this, same time as they like rate limit or something, right? Mm. So I noticed that there was another um, class that was calling the API, uh, the CMS helper, um, which mm. is kind of similar to what we're doing, but 
was kind of distinct also, so I kind of wanted to get your opinion on like whether that was worth trying to merge or if we should try oh, to separate. Oh, refactor you got like, yeah, I mean, you could do that, yeah. Uh. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, you gotta check uh, different behavior or what, like uh -huh. if you wanna do that. Okay, um, so should I add some code to check for the rate limiting case? Is that something you think you need to do? I mean, I, I mean, also like, have we actually had that come up? We're at like 100, 200 requests a day, right? So I mean, if it doesn't come, that's just like extra code, and I, it sounds like you want to like keep things like refactored and streamlined. Okay. Um. Yeah. So okay. All right. So that's what I saw. Um, if you want to take a second look at that stuff. Okay. So. I will take a pass at fixing those things and then um, ping you to take a second look and merge it. Do you not have the merge proof? Like, are you able to push to the repo but not master? Do you I, need to have me ask IT? I don't know, I mean, I haven't tried. Um, I thought I needed a plus one before I could merge it. Uh, no, what, you could have merged this now. Oh, really? Like, yeah, I mean, look, you asked for a code review, so, you know, I told you a few things you could look at if you want and then you, you know, see what you think needs changing, what you're pretty fine, you know, what you think is good, and like, oh, okay, yeah, like no one's gonna like micromanage you, or like, we don't have like a heavy pre-commit review process like that. Is that like the, your last place okay. was I'm like? Kind of. Um, okay, so, so I'll just merge it. Yeah, 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 I mean, look, you have the commit bit because you got it when we hired you and we trust you. Great. Great. Okay. So I am just completely stuck. I have no idea what to work on next. Oh, are, Everything you, is are you done with uh, 11054? I mean, kind of. Like, I figured out what was going wrong. Um, it was that Randall was subclassing from issue, and, and Ray was subclassing from bug, and this, like, they're similar but not the same, and oh. so that different behavior, like, it's not even obvious to me which one that we you want. You can merge them together? I mean, I could, but like, which is correct? I can't ask oh. PM, because they're out on like a retreat right now, um, and their entire calendar next week is booked full oh. of meetings. And like, what if functionality depends on? Right, exactly. Yeah, all so, right, yeah. I mean, you're good at this kind of detective work, though, right? Well, like, you're Detective Jason. Well, thank you, but like, since Nancy left, um, all of this work has been falling to me, and I can't do all of it. Like, there's just so much of this kind of problem that we're facing. Our code is a maze of twisty little functions, all alike. You know, if we could do a lot of this over again. Oh, hey, hey Jason, uh, how are you? Good, how are you? I, I'm okay, I think, did I see a, a message from you on Slack? Yeah, is now still a good time to do a code review? Oh, I can do that now, yeah, if it's good for you. Mm -hmm. uh, is your feature branch up to date? I mean, uh, so you know how Robin is working on continuous delivery? Yeah. Um, so my PR was the only one that was open, so they did a quick review and merged it to test, um, but it's, it's ready for you to take a look at. So it's in master? Mm -hmm. Now? Mm -hmm. I see. <laughs> what does this do? Right, so this is for bug 1104, which is to stop parsing the HTML and start using the API. Um, I, and I figured I while remember. we were in there, mm -hmm, I figured while we were in there, um, I could clean up some of the code, add a bug class to handle some of these interactions. But hold on, uh, Jason? Mm -hmm. What's this? Um, that's the API class, client. You wrote this from scratch? Mm -hmm. Wait, is the date right on this, that you wrote this, like, this is you who, not la last week, did you start on this? Yeah, but that's when Ray assigned me I, the... Okay, I'm, I don't know why you didn't ping me to check this. I mean, we had a conversation. Oh, no, no, okay, there's a few problems. A, this is redundant because we have an API client that we're using internal in this library, in this over here, that you, where I, you should have pulled this in Brian's. I didn't know about that. Uh, Brian's team wrote it. So this brings us to B, this is not just one API for our bug tracker. This is related to our services platform that this API token connects to that's for the shop, CRM, analytics, basically everything, which is why it makes sense to write a client that we use throughout the code base, what Brian's team has been working on, and that's a kind of finicky one, so we need to be kind of careful about 
error handling, and I don't think you even looked at the docs when I see your yeah, changes. It's basically zero error checking. You're no. not even checking for the status on this call, which always returns 200, even what? if you give it bad data. It I mean, you wasted, I mean, you spent a week on this? Yeah. Oh, uh, you should really have pinged me. I did. We had a whole long conversation in Slack, in the channel. Oh, no, no, no. You and other people may have had that conversation, but you didn't at mention and ping me. I can't keep track of everything in Slack. <laughs> Uh, you need to use Brian's library. I mean, I know it's in, okay, this isn't master, but it's not being used yet, right? Because you hit it behind a feature flag? No one said anything about having a feature Whoa, flag. Whoa, okay, so we need to get this reverted yesterday because if we're suddenly issuing a ton of these erroneous, which we may well be thanks to your, they're going to cut off our API token and our account on our, what is it? You don't know how to use git revert, do you? I can read the Watch man Watch me. Uh, all right, um, okay, the, um, the last sprint I think went well. Uh, we're only carrying over three stories from the last one. Um, and uh, most of those are part of the conversion from monolith to microservices. So you know we're gonna break out and get real free. And um, sales, um, you know, towards our uh, our stories for for the next sprint, that uh, we have a few um, a new a new story a new user story from sales. From sales? Yeah. Do we have a customer? Not a current signed up ink on paper is dry customer as such, but uh, sales is working on a new user persona where this story is supposed to be real real helpful for something that they're they're working on. Yep. So is this? gonna help us launch? Do we, do we know when that will be? We know it will be next year. We don't have a quarter set um, for launch, but uh, you know, we're, uh, we're on our way. Yep, so let's uh, go ahead and estimate out these, uh, you know, the, the, on the board. Yeah, so now that I look at the new story from sales, um, why do they think it will help? I recognize that, um, you know, what we've been working on and um, what they, uh, it's not a 100% one-to-one integration with the, as though the communication has been uh, with a, it's not as much of an on the face of it match uh, <laughs> uh, with the, core product that would all be together. <laughs> if I could do a thing over again. <laughs> hey, thanks for coming over, Jason. Yeah. Okay, so I have some comments on your pull request, mm -hmm. and I wanted to walk through them in person because it's your first time. I do have a few little criticism. Those can kind of read harsh, you know, if you're like just reading them on paper, you know, sure. online. So, and I, I don't want you to take it the wrong way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, that so, makes sense. Okay, so first off, this seems pretty good overall. Thank you. Right, but yeah. I, I am a little bit confused. It looks like uh, you wrote your own tool instead of using an existing one. Could you talk a little bit about why you made that choice? Oh, um, I didn't realize one existed. I, I looked for it on RubyGems, but I didn't see Oh, no, it's not relevant. open source. Uh, no, it's internal. Uh, Brian uh, wrote it. It's uh, He's in the Chicago office. I don't know if you know him yet. No, I don't. Um, so how should I have found that? Oh, oh, that is a good question. Um, I'm sorry. I just knew about it because a few years ago we started, and so I just looked in my email. Mm. There was a past email thread about it, and so I'll, I'll just find you that link, and I'll, I'll send that to you. I think that's what you're going to want to use. Okay. Mm. Uh, that would have been good to know, like, a couple days ago. It's frustrating to have to throw out all this code already. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Sometimes that's just how it is. Um, I, I mean, silver lining, now that you've written your own, uh, maybe you will find something useful in seeing how he solved this problem and, uh, you know, appreciate that. Heck, maybe you'll even be able to give him some ideas for improving it. Okay. Um, how would I make those suggestions? Oh, an email's fine. Okay. Um, you could ping him on chat. Uh, so, okay, that's really the only big change that I see in this. Um, I have a couple of co code style suggestions, but if this is more of a First pass, work in progress. I don't want to like go over it. If it's I mean, just... now's good. Might as well tell me that so I can fix it later. Okay. All right. Um, do you want me to point them out individually, or just have you look through the style guide and use that to check through oh, it? Oh, I didn't know about the style guide. 
Oh, yeah, I wrote a team code style guide I'm trying to spread it around. Did you not get that when you joined? I'll email it to you. Okay, thank you. Um, cool, yeah. Okay, right. so it sounds like the rest of the critiques that you have for this PR are sort of code style level things, aside from the big switching the um, I'd say that's, that's reasonable, I mean. Okay, are these things that could be represented in RuboCop? Is that something that we could like wire up to CI somehow so we don't have to do this by hand? Oh, that's a fine idea. I, I mean, like, uh, if you, are you excited about setting something like that up? Do you wanna help? Sure, I'm up for something new. Oh, this is great. Yeah, okay, so like, let's go. Go ahead and, and try that out, and uh, maybe if it works out for us, uh, maybe some other teams will pick it up. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, great. Oh, hey, what's up? Hey, Sumina, how's the conference? Oh, um, I'm, 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 I think it's good. You know, Ruby, RubyConf is always a good time. Yeah, good. Um, so uh, I, I, I'm not sure why you're calling though. Yeah, so um, I'm working on the migration from, or to deprecate TLS 1.1. Um, oh yeah, I worked on the the other the previous one, right? TLS 1.0 uh -huh. deprecation. That was a that was a bit of a tricky thing because you want to make sure that uh, we get all those cases. If if we don't do it right, then it's really hard to diagnose those client errors. Right, um, and so I was looking for like some kind of documentation or um, like a retrospective or notes or or anything that we had on the TLS 1.0. Um, deprecation. Oh, well, I mean, we thrashed it all out in a big email thread. Um, okay. I could find that and forward it to you. That would be super helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the other thing is uh, I came up with a checklist um, for our kickoff today, and so I would love for you to take a look at that. The kickoff's today? Mm -hmm. Oh, was there an email about that? Mm -hmm. Oh, um, okay. So how about there's a slot coming up. I don't need to go to the talk, so how about um, I'll go ahead and, and just uh, check check then, I'll, I'll look at what you sent me, I'll, I'll see if I have any comments on that checklist, and I'll forward you that thread from a few years ago. Great, thank you so much, that'll be helpful. And I'm so sorry to bother you while you're at the conference. Oh, it's fine, sometimes that's just how it is. Um, I, uh, you know, sometimes you gotta ask the last person who did it, because uh, that's who knows how to do it, right? That's how I had to, uh, check when I was doing the last deprecation. I had to call and find out from someone who had done it before. So all of this has happened before? I mean, I guess so. Okay, I'm gonna head off and do that. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, and all of this will happen again. Jason. Hi. Hi, I just saw your Zulip message. Yeah, is now still a good time for the code review? Uh, yep, if it's good for you. Uh, is your feature branch up to date? Yes, I just pushed the latest changes and it's ready for you to take a look. Okay, and have you tested it? It works on my machine. Famous last words. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna pull it down now. Last week, when we looked at your work in progress, we talked about using Brian's library. Mm -hmm. How did that go? Good, um, he was able to help me set up the dependency um, and add write that first API request, which was very helpful. Okay, so you pair programmed with him? Yeah, um, a little bit with him, and then also a bit with uh, Sarah. She came over for a couple hours yesterday, and, and we made a lot of progress. Oh, that's really great. Okay, so without looking, can you tell me what this PR does? Okay, yes, um, this is for bug 1104, which is to stop parsing HTML and start using the API instead. Right. Um, and I figured while I was in there, I could clean up some of the code, um, add a bug class to handle some of these interactions, um, and of course, add some tests. Ding, ding, ding! Yes, that is exactly what you say in your excellent commit messages. Thank you. Uh, yes, Sarah was real big on commit messages, um, and she was also able to help me break up a big commit that I'd done before, so I got to learn about um, git reset and git add dash b. Oh, that's really awesome. Yeah. And tiny commits are so much easier to review, but you've heard me say that. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like the build finished. Mm -hmm. It's time to pull that lever, find out if it's all green. Okay, it seems like there's just a few little style guide violations here and here that the linter caught, okay. but those are super easy to fix. Uh, we have some docs about how to run the linter locally that are on the wiki. I'll Good. just make sure you have a link. Mm -hmm. Good. All right, let me just keep looking. This is good overall. This Thank is really you. good overall. Um, this test here is pretty well named. Thank I wanted you. to call that out. Good. 
you are handling the error case of this API call correctly, and that is one of the main things I wanted to look for. Yes, um, I was poking through Brian's library as I was trying to figure out how to use it, and I'm so glad I did not have to like find and, and write code for all of the edge cases that this API has. I know, isn't it great how much detective work he did on that? Yeah, yeah, and it's not the only one, but I wanna show you here. Mm -hmm. See this comment? Mm -hmm. He has actually filed a bug with the vendor upstream. Oh, good. Yeah, so maybe we won't have to have this hacky workaround forever. That would be nice. Yeah, um, and this plus some other detective work that he's done on some other clients with other APIs for other vendors. Mm -hmm. He's actually thinking of collecting those together into kind of like a case study that mm -hmm. he's going to be submitting as a talk to RubyConf. That would be wonderful. <laughs> okay, yep, this is looking good. Uh, let us head over to your desk and fix those tiny linter violations, and then we can merge this. Great. Hey, thanks for coming over. How are you feeling about the code review? I'm okay. Oh, okay, I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I can understand that. Um, let me just put you at ease a little bit by saying that this is a good pull request. Like, I took a look earlier and you did a good job. Um, I was nervous my first time getting a, a code review too, but um, I'm not here to critique you or to like point out flaws in you as a person. Um, you are not your code, and if we find a bug, then it's super easy to fix, because it's just code. Um, and of course, now is the cheapest time to fix it, because it's in your head and a little bit in my head, um, and it's way easier than in like six or 12 months when we've forgotten how all this works and we have to figure it out when it's breaking. Um, and also, I hope this will be a learning opportunity for both of us. Um, so I will get to see how you have approached the problem and thought about it and maybe learn a thing or two from you. And then you will get to see what I am going to be looking for and asking questions about. And um, hopefully we'll, we'll both get to learn from that. Yeah, I, I guess that seems like a good way to do it. Great. Um, so how did you, how easy was it for you to make this change? Actually, it was like, surprisingly easy, like once I got the Linux running locally, I mean, it's good. Um, like I was able to use git blame for a lot, like everyone's commit messages are really clear. Yeah, isn't it great to be able to look through the history and, and learn from previous developers and their mistakes? The end. <laughs> uh, we have a few thank yous, so. We would like to thank Betsy Habel for co-starring with us. Thank you to uh, the sound and light cues, Audrey Eshright over at the AV table, I volunteered. We would like to thank our director, Jonathan Galvez. <laughs> yes, sir, yeah. Um, the, the staff here who did uh, the, the sound and uh, the, uh, the events crew from the AV staff, so specifically Randy and Paul, thank you for working with us. And thank you to the RubyConf organizers and especially event producer Heather Johnson for coordinating with us. And thank you all so much for coming to our play. Enjoy your break. Yes, have a good time.